<laughs> Great. So welcome. Um, last Wednesday when we were filming, I had a huge pancake breakfast before coming in to film, and, and then I realized that a baby and all the pancakes in my belly were not, <laughs> not great for demonstrating a whole class. Um, and, and I'm the kind of person who doesn't learn from my mistakes, so this morning we had all these fresh berries, and I was like, great, let's make pancakes. Um, so I ate a bunch of pancakes again. So it's a good day to have um, a class where we work on something that I can't do anyway <laughs> while I'm pregnant and have Chelsea <laughs> um, be the demonstrator. Um, so if you are pregnant or if you ate a lot of pancakes for breakfast, maybe, maybe choose a different class <laughs> for now. Um, good. So I, uh, on, the, on the subject of fresh berries, I was picking fresh berries this morning, and I, I love the, the metaphor that we get out of berry picking. So when we look at um, a berry plant, they're often kind of bushy, shorter things from like the, the bird's eye view or the human eye view of, of standing above the plant. Often we don't see any berries because the birds <laughs> can also see them from that angle and have picked them all away. Um, and so to, to do berry picking, you often have to kind of get closer to the ground or under the plant, or you, know, you have to change your perspective to, to find that hanging fruit. Um, and, and when we practice yoga, we're practicing this sort of seeing from different perspectives and, and changing the angle. We go sideways and we go upside down, even if we're just practicing downward dog or, or a standing forward fold, you don't have to be doing a handstand or anything to, to see the world upside down or we get closer to the floor. And um, I, I think there is a real effect in the brain when we do this, when we look at the world from different ways that translates into other parts of our lives so that we're more able to, to see different angles in, in other areas of our lives and see where that hidden fruit is that we might have otherwise been missing. Um, so maybe that's something that you can think about as we're moving around today. We'll start lying on the back, and you can just find a comfortable way to lie down. Uh, before I, sorry, before I get going, you might want a bolster or something um, like a, even just like a couch cushion, like a smaller cushion um, later in your practice. So if you don't have that handy, you might want to just go and grab that and then come back. Um, so any, any kind of improvised cushion will be fine. Even a, a bed pillow is probably good enough. And then once you've come back to join us, you can come down to lying on your back. And just find a comfortable way to be here and get nice and heavy. Let the shoulders relax. Let the hips soften into the earth. And you start to connect with your breathing. Noticing the path of your breath in your nose, throat, chest, your belly, the deeper bowl of your pelvis. And exhaling to empty completely back out. You could find your ujjayi breath here if that's part of your practice. It's really breathing especially along the back of your throat and finding some sound to that breath. Seeing especially here the relationship between your breathing and your core. So you really start to feel as you're exhaling how the belly moves inwards and how we can enhance that hug. So that there's a sense of really collecting strength towards your center body each time you breathe out. And then from here, we'll draw the knees into the chest and take your hands or your arms around your shins. 
You might rock a little bit side to side. So I'm just going to massage your back against the mat. And then we'll just find a, a little bit more of a warming up of the core. You can bring your legs straight up towards the ceiling. Take your hands down by your side so the palms right in sort of by your hips. Maybe even your thumbs are tucked in under your hips or you're kind of sitting on your hands. Um, so if you feel any discomfort in the low back, make sure that the hands are close enough in to support you. And then from here, finding a really long line up the back of your legs as you're inhaling. As you're exhaling, feel the hug between the inner lines of the thighs, that drawing in of the low belly to stabilize everything. Take another full breath in. And then we'll exhale to bring the right leg down towards the floor as close as you can without actually touching the floor. And then we're just gonna hover here for a moment. So keeping both legs nice and strong, really breathing into the backs of the legs. As you're exhaling, finding that hug in the low belly, seeing if you can find more strength from the core so that the shoulders and the face can stay relaxed. And a nice full breath in here. And as you're exhaling, the belly drawing in, maybe feeling the inner lines of the legs still active, even though the legs are not touching. Next inhale, bring that right leg back up. And then we'll exhale to take the left leg down towards the floor. And just hovering here for a moment, seeing if we can find a good sense of strength in both legs, breath in the backs of both legs. As you're exhaling, the hug towards center in the belly, the hug towards center through the midline of the legs, even though they're not touching. So you think of like scissors, how they hug the same line without necessarily being together. And then we'll inhale to bring that left leg back up. Good. Exhale, bringing your knees into your chest and just let the belly be soft for a moment. Again, you might rock a little bit side to side if you like. And then we'll again bring the legs up towards the ceiling, taking your hands in by your side. So maybe tucking the thumbs in right under your body and kind of sitting on your hands if that gives you a bit more sense of support. And then we'll keep the legs really glued together this time. So squeezing the inner lines of the legs towards the midline, feeling the hug in the low belly. Take a nice breath in through the backs of your legs here. And then as you exhale, you can lower your legs maybe about halfway down or less if halfway is too far. Inhale, holding here. Exhale, come maybe about another quarter of the way down or less. Inhale here. Exhale, lowering as close to the floor as you're able without touching the floor. And then inhale, seeing if you can keep the legs straight, bring them all the way back up towards the ceiling. So we'll do that twice more. The shoulders, the face as relaxed as possible. Exhaling to lower about halfway down or less. Take an inhale, really squeezing the legs together. Exhale, lower another quarter of the way or less. Squeezing the legs together, nice full inhale. Exhale, lower as close to the floor as you're able. Finding that squeeze through the center line of the legs. And then inhale, the legs come all the way back up. One more time, exhaling, legs about halfway down. Inhale, holding. Exhale, another quarter of the way down. Inhale, hold. Exhale, come close to the floor. And then inhale all the way back up. Good. Exhale, knees into the chest. And again, you could bring your hands to your shins and just rock a little bit to loosen up, letting go of any effort in the belly. So as much as we want to know how to engage those muscles. We also want to know how to make sure that we're not gripping too hard, not creating any kind of habitual hardiness in the body. Good, with your next exhale, you can bring your feet down to the floor. We'll inhale just to reach the arms up alongside the ears. Take a nice stretch back through your fingers. Exhale, rolling onto your right side. And then inhale to find your way up to a seat and just arriving in a comfortable cross-legged position or whatever seat you like. You can place your hands to your thighs with the palms facing down. And then we'll just roll through the shoulders a few times. So we're inhaling to bring the shoulders forward and up towards the ears. Exhale, drawing the shoulders down and back. Inhaling forward and up. Exhaling down and back. And keep going a few more times, your own smooth rhythm of breathing. Feeling how the arm bone moves in the shoulder socket, how the shoulder blades and the collarbones glide across the body. I'm just looking for as much fluidity in all of those areas as you can find. Okay. And then we'll switch directions. So you can turn your palms to face up. And now we'll inhale to bring the shoulders back and up towards the ears. Exhale, melting forward and down. 
Inhaling again, back and up. Exhaling forward and down. A few more times, your own smooth rhythm of breathing. Just exploring the whole space of the shoulder girdle and notice where there's any kind of stickiness or closeness. You might give yourself a little bit of extra attention or extra breath. Good, and then from here, you can bring your arms out in front of you, interlace the fingers, and then turn the palms forward. So we get to feel maybe a little bit of a stretch through the wrists as we press out through the palms. Good. And then we'll inhale to reach the arms up alongside the ears. Exhale, reaching over to the right into a bit of a side bend. Stay here on your inhale, so you can really stretch out through that left side body. Draw in through the low belly, maybe lean a little bit more as you exhale. And inhale to come back up to center, really reaching up through those palms. Exhale now over to the left, finding the length in your right side body as you inhale. Hugging in the low belly, a little bit more reach over to the left as you exhale. Good. Inhale to come back up to center, reaching tall. Exhale again, bring your arms forward parallel to the floor, and now really round the back, so you can find a kind of wider shape through the shoulder blades. We'll inhale once here to breathe into that space of the upper back. Exhale, drawing in through the belly, maybe you can curl in a little bit more. And inhale, the arms reaching up towards the ceiling, nice tall stretch. Exhale, over to the right, again moving into that side bend. Inhaling here into the left side body. Exhale, find a farther reach over to the right. Inhale up to center, nice tall press up through your hands. Exhale over to the left. Find the breath in your right side body. Exhale, maybe a little bit farther over to the left. Inhaling up to center. Exhale again, the arms forward parallel to the floor, rounding through the back. Good. Inhale to breathe into that rounder shape of your back, spread your shoulders wide. Exhale, hug in the belly, maybe you can kind of curl in a little bit more, really still pressing forward through your hands. And one more time, inhaling to reach your arms straight up, pressing up through your palms. And then we'll exhale to release the hands down by the sides. And from here, coming your way to all fours, and we just bring your hands in front of you and roll over the knees or whatever you like. And setting your knees up under your hips and your wrists under your shoulders. Moving now through a few rounds of cat and cow. So we inhale to stretch the belly long, reach the ribs forward. Exhale, that same rounded feeling in the back, really curling into the belly, pressing the shoulder blades wide. Inhaling to stretch the heart forward, lengthening the belly, spreading the sits bones wide. And just a few more times, your own slow rhythm of breathing. A little bit more opportunity here to warm up the whole length of your spine so you can feel how the movements begin at the tailbone, ripple all the way up to the base of your neck. Good. With your next inhale, you can come back to a neutral shape in the spine. And from here, we'll turn the right hand first out to the right and then back towards your right knee. So right finger is pointing in towards your right knee and your right thumb is at the outer edge of your mat. And then we move through a few more rounds of cat and cow. So you inhale to lengthen the belly, reach the ribs forward. Exhale to round, really pushing down through your hands. And inhaling and to lengthen the ribs forward. Maybe you can find a little bit of bend in that right elbow. Exhaling to round, pressing the mat away from you. One more time, inhaling to lengthen into cow. And again, see maybe if you can even find some bend in that right elbow to really explore the space of the wrist. Exhaling to round, pushing the mat away from you. Getting inhale, come back to a neutral shape in the spine. Turn that right hand forward. Turn your left hand out and then back. So left finger is pointing towards your left knee. Good. A few rounds again of cat and cow. As you inhale, stretch the belly long. Exhaling to round through the back, pushing the mat away from you. Inhaling to lengthen out through the belly. Again, maybe some bend in the left elbow if you're able. Exhaling to round. And one more time, inhaling, finding that lengthening out of the belly. Maybe some bend in your left elbow. And then exhaling, rounding. 
And inhale to come back to a neutral shape in the spine, turning that left hand forward. And now we'll just turn both hands to face outwards away from each other, so fingers towards the outer edges of your mat. And we're just gonna rock a little bit side to side to see if you can explore again a feeling of a little bit of a stretching through the front of the forearm into the space of the wrist. So you might find that it's a little bit easier here to find range of motion, shifting your weight from one side to the other. Good. And then coming back to center and turning both hands to face forward. Tucking your toes under, you can reach your hips up and back, moving into downward dog. Just taking a moment here, you can press the hands firmly into the floor, really feel the, the roots of the hands, so the inner edge of your hand reaching into the mat, the finger pads grabbing the floor, shoulder blades spread nice and wide on the back, so you can really send your hips up high via the power of your arms over the shoulder blade through your core. And you might like to bend the knees a little bit or find a rocking quality here, whatever helps you to settle into this shape. And with your next inhale, you can ripple forward into a plank and coming as far forward as you're able. So shoulders lay over your wrists or even farther forward of your wrists if you can. And then as you're exhaling, just lowering your way down, you might come right down onto your belly first. And we'll read the tops of the feet, inhaling into a cobra, reaching the ribs forward. Exhaling to soften back down. Inhale again to come into a cobra, reaching the ribs forward. Exhaling to come back down. And one more time, inhaling, ribs reaching forward, lengthening out the belly. Exhaling to soften back down. Again. You can tuck your toes under, inhaling, hugging in through the belly. You might keep your knees on the mat for a moment, but see if you can really lift your hips and your shoulders at the same time as you're inhaling. So coming up towards a plank, eventually the knees will straighten out. And then we'll exhale to take the hips up and back, moving into downward dog. In a moment here to see if you can send your hips up really nice and high. And then with the hips lifted up high, can you stretch your heels away from your hips for more space down the backs of the legs. Moving through a fluid vinyasa, we'll inhale to ripple forward into a plank, really rounding through the upper back as you come forward. Exhale, lowering all the way or halfway. Inhaling, cobra or upward dog. Exhaling to take your hips up and back, moving into downward dog. And slowly walking your feet forward to your hands, arriving at a comfortable forward fold. Just finding as much bend in your knees as you need. You'll inhale here to come halfway up, reach the ribs forward. Exhale, scooping in the belly to fold back down. Inhale again, coming halfway up, the ribs reaching forward. Exhaling to settle back down. And one more time, inhaling halfway up, ribs reaching forward. Exhaling to settle, and just let yourself dangle for a moment, head really nice and heavy. You might bring your hands to your opposite elbows if you like. Let go of the mid back, the low back. Finding space in the back of the neck, relaxing the whole area of the face. And letting the hands drip back towards the floor. As you inhale, you can slowly roll up to standing. So coming up bone by bone, feeling the length of your spine as you lift. Eventually stacking the spine into a nice tall line. So tailbone reaching down, the belly hugging in, the ribs lifting, shoulders spreading out wide. Good. With an inhale, we'll reach the arms up and stretch up through the fingers. Exhaling to fold, bringing the hands towards the floor. Inhaling to come halfway up, reaching your ribs forward. Exhale, softening down, stepping your right foot back. Then we'll inhale to come up to a high lunge, arms reaching up towards the ceiling. Again, interlacing the fingers and pressing up through your palms, and finding the same kind of quality of stretching through the wrists. Make sure the shoulders stay relaxed here away from the ears and hips settling nice and deep. Find the hug in the low belly that lifts you away from your left thigh. Reaching up a little bit taller through the ribs on your inhale. You'll exhale again to stretch over to the left. So finding a side bend shape here, a long space in your right side body. And squeezing the inner lines of the legs towards center to help you find your balance and really knowing where your midline is. And then we'll inhale to come back up to center. Exhale, bringing your hands down to the floor, pressing them out away from you, stepping back to plank, moving with your own breath, finding your path to downward dog. And 
inhale to reach the right leg up and back. Exhale, hug the knee into the chest. Step the right foot forward towards your hands. Inhale to come up to your high lunge, reaching the arms up tall. Interlacing the fingers, pressing your palms up towards the ceiling. Letting the shoulders relax, letting the hips settle. Again, this hug towards the center line by really squeezing the inner lines of your thighs towards each other. Drawing the belly away from your right thigh so there's length in the left hip crease. And now we can reach over to the right. I'm finding a longer line through the left side body. As you inhale, maybe you can feel a lifting in both sides of the waist, both sides of the ribs. And as you're exhaling, you're using that hug in the low belly to support the spine as you reach farther over to the right. And inhaling to come back up to center. Exhaling to bring the hands down to the floor, stepping your left foot forward to meet your right foot. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, sinking down. Pressing into the feet, inhale, growing all the way up to standing, reaching tall. Exhaling, hands to the center of the chest. And inhale to reach your arms back up. Exhale, folding forward, bring the hands to the floor. Inhale, halfway up, ribs reaching forward. Exhale, softening down, stepping your left foot back. It will inhale to reach the arms up alongside the ears. Nice tall stretch. And this time just keeping the fingertips reaching straight up. See if you can find all of that steadiness again by knowing where your midline is. Inner leg strong, the belly strong. Another inhale to grow tall here. Now as you exhale, twisting to the right, bring your left arm forward, your right arm back. So we're moving to just a nice wide open twist and keep stretching back through your right finger so that you're pulling your torso away from that right thigh. And look for space in your left hip crease and really keep the squeeze through the midline of the legs to help you balance. Now taking your right hand down to the back of your left thigh, we'll inhale the left arm alongside the left ear. So you get another kind of side bend. And then exhaling to windmill the hands down to the floor, stepping back to plank your own path to downward dog, just following your own smooth rhythm of breathing. And inhale to reach the left leg up and back. Exhale, draw the knee into the chest, step the left foot forward. Inhale, high lunge, reaching your arms up tall. Settling the shoulders, settling the hips, and drawing away from your left thigh so you feel this bit of stretch in the right hip crease and the action of the core to keep the spine upright over the hips. And another inhale to grow taller and then exhaling to turn to the left, right arm reaching forward, left arm reaching back and spread the arms out wide. Maybe there's a little bit more effort in stretching back through that left hand to pull your torso farther away from your left thigh so you're still centered over your hips. Grow tall as you inhale. Feel the action of the core hugging in as you exhale to help you to turn even more. And then keep that inner line of your legs steady. We'll exhale to drop the left hand down behind the, to the back of the right thigh and then inhale the right arm alongside the right ear. And exhaling to carefully windmill your hands to the floor, stepping your right foot forward. Inhale halfway up, exhale sinking down. Pressing into the feet, inhaling all the way up, nice tall reach. Exhaling hands to the center of the chest. Inhale to reach your arms back up, and then we'll interlace the fingers, press up through the palms. Exhale here to stretch over to the right. Inhaling to come back to center. Exhaling to stretch over to the left. Inhaling to come back to center. Exhale to bring your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. Inhale, lifting the center of the chest. Exhale, a little bit of bend in the knees as you start to drape your torso over your thighs. You're folding down towards the legs. And then as much as you're able, you can let the arms start to settle away from your back. So you get some stretch in the shoulders. Another nice opportunity to let go of your neck, let go of your face. Really let the head be heavy off the end of the spine. And then you can bring your hands closer into your hips. Sit the hips low, releasing the hands. We'll inhale to swing the arms up alongside the ears, coming into Utkatasana. Exhale, folding hands towards the floor. Inhale, halfway up, reach the ribs forward. Exhale, planting your hands, stepping or maybe hopping back, finding your own path again to downward dog. 
just following your own rhythm of breathing. Inhale to reach the right leg up and back. Exhale, draw the knee into the center of the chest. Bring your shoulders forward over your wrists. You can really squeeze that thigh up towards you. Good. We'll inhale again to reach the right leg up and back. Now as you exhale, take the knee to your upper right arm. Shoulders forward over the wrists. Good. Inhale, reaching up and back. Exhale, hug the knee across your upper left arm. Shoulders as far forward as you're able. Inhale, reaching up and back. Good. Exhale, bring the knee back to the center of the chest. Step your right foot towards your hands. And place your left foot flat to the floor. We'll inhale to come up into warrior one. And settling here for a few breaths. Hips nice and heavy, belly away from your right thigh. Growing up tall through the ribs. Making sure we're breathing into the back ribs and the side ribs as much as we breathe into the front body. So we're still aware of the three-dimensional space of the body. And then exhaling to settle into warrior two, bring your arms out shoulder height, and sit the hips nice and low, adjust the feet as you need to. And letting the hips drop, but still collecting in through the low belly to feel that lift in the ribs. So the core helps us to organize the space between the hips and the ribs. And when we're upright, it helps us to really give buoyancy to the ribs so that we can lift away from the hips. And then we'll straighten the right leg. Inhale to reach your right arm as far forward as you're able. Exhaling the right arm down, the left arm up for triangle pose. And sending your hips back, reaching your ribs forward, lengthening out the belly. And go straight up with that left arm. Maybe lean a little bit back through the shoulder, but try and keep the direction of the arms reaching just like right out from your midline. Good, next inhale and come back up to standing. Exhale to bend your right knee, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior, the right arm sweeping back. Exhale, bringing your right forearm to your right thigh or your right hand down to the floor. And reach the left arm alongside the left ear, moving into an extended side angle shape. Get strong roots through the feet. Nice sense of weight in the hips. You can hug your right hip under your torso, roll your left side ribs open. So feel again how the breath helps you to organize the shapes here. And we inhale to look for length in the left side body. And exhale to feel the drawing in of the belly, which allows you to turn the ribs away from the hips. And we'll press down through the feet. Inhale to come back to reverse warrior, lengthening through your right side. Exhale to windmill your hands down to the floor. And step back to plank your own path to downward dog. Inhale to reach the left leg up and back. Exhale, draw the knee into the chest. Inhale to reach up and back. Exhale, take the knee towards the upper left arm, really leaning into your hands. Inhale, reach up and back. Exhale the knee to the upper right arm, keeping the hips lifted as you hug the thigh towards you. Inhale, reach up and back. And exhale to draw the knee back into the center of the chest, keeping the thigh lifted. Step your foot towards your hands. Right foot flat to the floor. Inhale to come up into warrior one. Square sense of the hips here so that right thigh might spiral forward. The left sits bone draws back. The belly hugs away from the left thigh, growing up tall through your ribs. Feeling how the breath helps you to shift into more buoyancy in the ribs as you're inhaling. And then weight in the hips, but also support in the core as you're exhaling. So we keep that sense of lift in the rib cage, even as we're letting the hips settle. And then from here, shifting into warrior two, you can bring your arms out shoulder height, adjust the feet as you need to. So there's a wide space across the front of the pelvis. Left knee in the same direction as your left toes. And look for some softness around the base of the neck here. So there's work in the arms to keep them stretching out wide from your body, but not too much effort around the neck itself. 
And then we'll straighten the left leg, inhale to reach the left arm forward, exhale, left arm down, right arm up for triangle pose. And sending your hips back, lengthening out through the sides of the waist, feeling the breath help you to gain length and space as you inhale. And the exhale doesn't shorten the torso in this case, but we feel that hug in the deepest area of the core to support the ribs in space. Maybe also that same kind of twisting that we looked for in this extended side angle. So the, the right side ribs just gently rolling open. And inhale to come back up to standing. Exhaling to bend your left knee. Inhale to reverse warrior, the left arm reaching back. Exhaling left forearm to thigh or left hand to the floor, right arm alongside your right ear. And breathing into the length of your right side body, right side ribs. Really seeing if we can loosen up any extra tension in that area of the side waist so that when we want to engage the muscles all around the core to help us um, find balance um, in the weight in the hands, then we don't have anything getting in the way. And we'll press into the feet, inhale to come back to a reverse warrior, the left side body long. Exhaling to windmill the hands down to the floor. Stepping back to plank and then bringing your knees down to the mat and cross your ankles and we'll just roll back over the feet to come to seated. And setting your feet up in front of you, soles of the feet to the floor, the feet about mat width apart to start. You could lean back into your hands for a moment just to see if you can get the belly kind of between your thighs. So you can come up onto your fingertips and push your torso forward between your thighs so there's not too much roundness in the back. And then from here, we'll start to set the feet closer together, bringing yourself like right up onto the front edge of your sits bones. You can take your hands to the backs of your thighs so without any roundness in the back. We're moving into boat pose here. Yeah, so we'll bring the feet right in together now, squeezing the inner lines of the legs together if you can, still sitting up tall on the front edge of your sits bones. Lean back a little bit more so that you can pick your feet up off the floor. And maybe we can bring the heels as high as the knees. Really seeing if we can again squeeze to more the midline through the inner legs, hugging in through the belly, feeling how the ribs can lift away from the hips if we access that strength in the core. And for a moment here, we'll reach the arms forward alongside the legs if you're able. Shoulders soft, face relaxed. Every inhale giving you a little bit more lift. Maybe the heels come up even a tiny bit higher. The heart lifts up. As you exhale, find that hug towards your center line, inner thigh strong, belly strong, still relaxing the shoulders and the face. One more inhale. And then exhaling to bring your feet down to the floor and cross the ankles, roll over the feet, coming into plank, and then from there, your path to downward dog, maybe through a vinyasa, maybe just straight to downward dog, and following your own breath. And we'll inhale to reach the right leg up and back. Exhale, draw the knee into the chest. Step the right foot forward towards your hands. Left foot flat to the floor. Inhaling to come up into warrior one. Good. Exhaling to move into warrior three. So weight into your right foot. And float the left leg up parallel to the floor. I'm just taking a moment here. Your arms could be forward or out to the sides or back by your hips, whatever you like. Looking for a lift through the inner line of your left leg, so the hips are really square, and then feel like you're using the strength of that back leg to help you stay balanced here. So really engaging through the back leg in order to keep it afloat, engaging through the core to keep your ribs afloat. Yeah. And then we'll bend the right knee and slowly step the left foot back, moving now into warrior two, arms out, shoulder height. Good. Straightening your right leg, turn your right toes towards the left and we'll angle the toes slightly outwards and the heels slightly inwards and then bring your hands to your hips. You can bend your knees, moving into a kind of horse stance. See if you can send your knees out in the same direction as your toes. So knees reaching out really nice and wide. Good. 
From here, we'll inhale to bring the arms up alongside the ears, interlace the fingers, press up through the palms, and then just holding this shape for a few breaths, seeing if we can really sit low in the hips, relax the shoulders, and keep the knees spreading out wide, feel that lengthening in the inner thighs, and growing up tall through your ribs even as we let the hips settle. So feeling in how some effort in the core can help us to create length in the center body so that we grow in both directions. Maybe sit the hips a tiny bit lower, press those knees outwards, take one more inhale to find a stretching up through your rib cage. And then we'll exhale to straighten up the legs and bring your hands back to your hips. Turn your toes inwards and the heels slightly outwards. Inhale here to lift the center of the chest. Exhaling to fold, bringing your hands towards the floor. And you can inhale to reach your ribs forward. Exhale to hug the belly in and fold maybe a little bit deeper. Maybe your hands come flat to the floor. You might start to look for something like chaturanga arms, so you're setting your wrists up under your elbows. So the hands might walk back a little bit farther in order to get the wrists right under the elbows. So we have again a, a stretched quality in the wrist and the front of the forearm. Notice that the elbows might want to swing outwards. We could have a, a bit of effort to hold them above the line of the elbow. So there's a feeling of kind of squeezing your elbows slightly inwards. And then maybe you can lean weight into your hands, breathing up the backs of your legs, let the hips lift. As you exhale, we scoop the belly in, we stretch the ribs down. So we're trying to feel how the core might help us to reach the hips and the ribs away from each other. In this case, it's the ribs that are getting more deep towards the floor and the hips that are becoming more buoyant towards the ceiling. And you notice, especially at the end of your exhale, this moment where we can really scoop in through the lowest area of the belly. And you might even find a space between your exhale and your inhale, where you explore what that strength can do for you. So we breathe fully out, we scoop in the lowest part of the belly, and then before you breathe in again, see if you can push your hips up and stretch your ribs down away from the hips. And then you take your next inhale. And if that seems too complicated, then just don't worry about it and keep breathing. <laughs> Good, we'll inhale to come back up to a sort of half lift, so your ribs reaching forward. Exhale, hands to your hips. Inhaling to come all the way back up to standing. Turning the right toes forward, bending the right knee, bring the arms out, shoulder height. Good. Inhaling to reverse warrior, the right arm sweeping back. Exhale, windmilling the hands down to the floor. We'll step back to plank, traveling with your own breath, your path to downward dog. Inhaling to reach the left leg up and back. Exhale, knee into the chest, stepping the left foot forward towards the hands. Place the right foot flat to the floor, inhaling up to warrior one. Good. Now shifting your weight into your left foot, exhaling into warrior three. Seeing if we can really press down through the left foot and then find the lift through the inner line of the right leg. You can set up your arms as you like. I'm just focusing more on really finding the balance of weight between the back leg and the upper body and the use of strength in both the back leg and the torso to keep both ends of that scale lifted away from the floor. So we press back through the ball of your big foot, feel all of the muscles around the left leg draw in, oh, sorry, the right leg draw in the belly drawing in so that you can really reach the ribs forward. Okay. And then we'll slowly bend the left knee, take a big step back with the right foot, moving again into warrior two, arms out, shoulder height. Okay. Straightening your left leg, turn your left toes to the right and then angle the toes again outwards. Okay. And we'll sit back into that sort of horse stance. You can bend your knees, send your knees out in the same direction as your toes. Good. You can bring your hands now behind your head and interlace the fingers so the elbows are out wide. Sit the hips nice and deep. Keep the belly drawing in to lift the ribs away from the hips. Good. Now as you exhale, you dip your right elbow towards your right knee, sort of side bending to the right, long spacing your left side. Inhale to come back to center. 
Exhale to dip the left elbow towards the left knee. Inhaling to come back to center. Stay low in your hips, wide in the knees. Exhale over to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. We'll do a few more rounds. You could keep going as we were, or maybe reaching your right hand down towards the inside of the right foot and the left arm straight up towards the ceiling as you dip over to the right. And then coming back up with the arms out shoulder height. And then exhaling, left hand down to the inside of the left foot, right arm up into space. Inhaling back up to center. So just do maybe two more rounds on each side, either with the elbows bent or with the arms out wide. And see if you can stay low in the hips, keep the knees pressing out. Really feeling how we're holding the space of the ribs lifted by using the core each time we exhale. Good. And then after you've done those two more rounds, you can slowly straighten up your legs on your exhale, hands to your hips. Actually, let's bring the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. Inhale, lift the center of the chest, turning your toes inwards and your heels outwards. And then as you exhale, you can fold over your legs. And leaning weight into the balls of your feet, finding breath up the backs of the legs. And seeing once more if we can stretch into the shoulders by letting the arms drift away from the back. Head nice and heavy, the face relaxed. And pressing into the feet, inhale to come back up. Turn the left toes forward, bring the arms out into warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior, the left arm sweeping back. Exhale, windmilling the hands down to the floor. Stepping back to plank. Bringing your knees down to your mat again. Cross your ankles and roll over the feet to come to seated. So we'll set up for Navasana, boat pose again. So you can start with your feet out in front of you, maybe a little bit wider, the fingertips behind you to help press your weight forward onto the front edge of your sits bones. Really see if you can kind of get your belly forward between your thighs and then stay up nice and tall on the front edge of the sits bones, bringing your hands forward to hold the backs of the thighs and walk the feet in right together. And then we'll lean the torso back without rounding, pick up the feet, see if you can get them up maybe as high as your knees, really squeezing towards the center line through the legs. And we'll reach the arms forward, bring the palms together, sit up nice and tall still with your ribs. As you exhale, you can turn to the right, so you're reaching your hands over to the right. A few breaths here, go up with your ribs, up with your heels as you inhale. Use the exhale to find that center line in your body and hug towards it. Maybe you can even draw your thighs and your chest towards each other. Another full inhale here, maybe lifting a little bit taller. It will exhale back through center, coming over to the left. And then using your inhale again to grow upwards. Exhale to find that hugging quality so you know where your midline is. And using the power of the core on your inhale to help you grow even a little bit taller. Another exhale here. One more full breath in. Good. Turning as you exhale back to center and releasing the feet back to the floor. And crossing your ankles, rolling over your knees, coming again to a plank. And from there, your path to downward dog. Now you can bring your knees down to the mat and just setting the knees wide so they're maybe almost mat width apart. Bring the big toes together and then root the tops of the feet. We'll sit back into a, a wide-legged child's pose. You can just take a moment to relax here. Let the shoulders soften. Let the weight of your hips drop, folding into your hip creases, into your knee creases. If you feel any um, tensions in the wrist, Maybe it's helpful to make strong fists with your hands and then stretch the fingers out wide. And then again, make really strong fists with the hand and stretch the fingers out wide. So just do that a few times and it just gives us a little bit of a release through the narrow space of the wrist. Good. Great, and then you could come up onto your um, seated on your heels so that we can just have a little look here. So Chelsea, you might want to grab your bolster now. 
Um, we're basically going to start in that same shape that we were just in with the knees relatively wide. So um, sitting up on the heels. And then what we want to be able to do um, is Actually, I might just sneak in here for a moment. It's easier to show than <laughs> describe. What we want to be able to do for this shape is to really get the elbows like in towards the belly. Um, I don't know if I'm too tall. And it, you have to kind of see where things fit. <laughs> for me, nothing fits right now. But um, you kind of come around the outside of whatever you have up top, if there's a lot of it, and then really try and get your elbows in towards your belly and the wrists together if you're able. So that's gonna be um, the starting shape for the hands. So this pose is called Mayurasana. It's a, a peacock shape. So we can think about the peacock who doesn't have his tail up in a big fan, but rather has the weight of his tail dragging out behind him. <laughs> and he has to figure out how to lift it off the floor. So getting your, um, your bolster ready. Your bolster is gonna come in between the upper arm and the belly. And it just gives us a little bit more to press against. Um, again, a cushion or a pillow of some kind will work just fine here. So you could place the bolster, um, if you're able, between the arms and the chest, Chelsea. Like, get that position in your arms ready and then get the bolster in there. <laughs> and the spine will be round. Figuring out how to set this thing up is the hardest part. <laughs> okay. Then the hands come down onto the floor. So you can have a look at Chelsea if you're confused. She's doing it exactly right. Um, and if your hands don't turn exactly back, that's also OK. They can turn outwards. We just don't want them to turn forward. So they need to be pointing at least out or maybe back towards your knees or towards your toes. And then whenever Chelsea's ready, she can just start to lean her weight forward into her hands here. And she's going to lean, 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 lean. She's pushing her belly into the bolster to help activate the core, and then maybe the knees and the feet can start to float up. Again, thinking about that peacock tail. Like male peacocks, they have a hard time in life. <laughs> That's a lot of weight <laughs> to carry behind you. Um, so squeezing the feet together sometimes is helpful. It's perfect. And maybe you get like a little moment of lift and then you, you lose it. Um, so it's sometimes worth it to try it a few times. Don't look back at your feet. That's always the the um, thing that we do in arm balance is that is so unhelpful. Always look where you want to go. So if you look forward and kind of reach your heart forward, that helps keep your weight of your upper body off the floor. <laughs> if you look down, the weight of the head pulls you down and it becomes much more difficult. So maybe if you just want to give it one more little try there, seeing if you can get even a moment of floatiness. Perfect. And then we'll come back down. So eventually our idea might be to straighten the legs out behind us, but we don't have to worry about that <laughs> right away. <laughs> Great, you can set your bolster or your pillow, whatever you had, off to one side. And then we'll just sit back on the heels again and see if we can give the, the wrists a little bit of a loosening up. So interlacing your fingers in front of you, um, you can start to make just sort of loose circles in one direction, kind of like a figure eight shape without pushing into any area of the wrist. So noticing that we're, we're folding the wrist now in the other direction. So rather than focusing on that opening of the front of the forearm, see if you can really find like the feeling of rolling through the back of the forearm. Yeah. We'll go in the other direction. So again, just like kind of really loose figure eight sort of circles. And noticing again that especially that we can fold the wrist so that the palm is coming in towards the front of the forearm and there's some space around the back of the wrist. And then you can just let go and give your hands a little bit of a shake out. From here, coming to seated. So take the hips off to one side, swing the legs forward. We'll start with the left leg out long and pull the right knee in towards you. Step your right foot to the outside of your left leg. Coming into a twist here. So setting your right hand behind you, inhale to reach the left arm up. And then exhaling to turn the ribs towards the right and connect your left arm with your right leg in whatever way makes sense for you. Leaning towards the front edge of your sits bones, growing up tall through the ribs. As you exhale, low belly drawing in, turning with the ribs more towards the right. And we might be softer in our core now. We've done a lot of working with the core, but still noticing that there's this relationship between breath and activation in the center body, and that, that really helps us to navigate both the lift in the ribs and the turning of the ribs without being too forceful. 
You can almost think of it as just like really paying attention to the natural pattern of your breath and allowing the, the body to respond to that natural pattern. You can slowly turn back towards center. We're going to come right to the other side. So the right leg reaching forward, left knee hugging into the chest, stepping your left foot towards the outside of your right leg, left hand behind you, inhaling to reach the right arm up, exhaling to turn to the left, right arm connecting to your left leg, whatever way makes sense. And then you're seeing if you can still sit up tall on the front edge of the sits bones, keep growing the ribs up away from the hips so there's lots of room in your center body and that room allows us to continue exploring the twist so if the spine is really rounding it it's difficult to twist if we can get more length more of an upright shape then that turning becomes easier and keeping the shoulders relaxed the face soft so even though we have some effort in the core or some effort in paying attention to the breath we also look for release in areas where we don't need to be working. You notice if you're doing anything that is not actually supporting this shape, maybe we can not do those things. That includes physical effort and also mental effort, which is unhelpful or unnecessary. And you just slowly unwind, coming back to center. You set the feet to the floor and find your way um, slowly down onto your back. And we'll bring the feet about hip width apart, the heels close into the sits bones. Pressing down through the feet and lift your hips, bring your hands underneath you, so setting up for a bridge pose. And snuggle your shoulder blades in close together, so really looking for a wide space across the chest and some opening of the area where your upper arm bone connects into your upper body. And pressing down through your arms, pressing down through your feet, lifting your hips up nice and high, tailbone reaching forward, chest reaching towards the chin so we can get length in the belly, length in the tops of the thighs, opening up the hip creases. Just flushing out the center body with really full, nourishing breaths. And then exhaling to release the hands and settle the hips back to the earth. And bring your feet out a little bit wide for a moment and let the knees fall in together so the spine can just come into a neutral shape. Nice relaxed quality here. And then we'll bring the arms out about shoulder height, keeping the feet wide and just separate the knees a little bit here. And then we'll slowly start to windshield wiper the knees side to side. So as you exhale, you drop both knees down to one side and then you inhale to come back to center. You exhale over to the other side. So you just go at your own smooth pace, feeling this kind of rolling of the thigh bone through the hip socket. So you get the full range of motion in each direction. You can also notice a little bit of a twisting in the low spine and maybe an opportunity to sort of massage your outer hips against the floor if there's anything in there that needs a little bit of your attention, your tenderness. And then bring your knees back towards center. Draw the knees in towards the chest. You can take your hands or your arms around your shins. And then you can rock a little bit side to side here. So that same loving, massaging quality of the back body against the floor. Loosening up anything that is gripped or hard. 
really relaxing, especially through the belly. So there's not any real need to do work now with your core. Good, and then we'll release the feet to the floor, setting yourself up for Shavasana, however you like. So you could have your legs out straight. If you've got a bolster or something you want to place under your knees, you could do that. Um, or even just having the soles of the feet to the floor and the knees bent, if that's what feels best for you. And let the arms settle by your sides. Let the shoulders be nice and heavy. Good. And then before you completely settle into Shavasana, we'll just do that same kind of rolling with the head. Make it really nice and slow. So you can slowly turn your face over to one side. And just massaging out the back of the head against the floor as you go. And the slower you go, the more opportunity we have to really massage through each centimeter of skin. And then as you come to the end of that range of motion on one side, you slowly turn back towards center and go in the other direction. And you just might do that one or two times to each side. And the head as heavy as possible so that you're really only using the minimum muscular effort that you need to do this turning. Everything else is relaxed, soft through the neck, soft through the face. The, the pull of gravity increase the massaging quality of the head against the floor. And then you can eventually arrive back at center and just let the head be heavy in that center space whenever you're ready for that. Shavasana is probably one of the most interesting perspectives that we have. It's the corpse pose, so the, the practicing of death. I think the opportunity to allow ourselves to disengage from all of our attachments to our practice or the world around us. You might notice where you're still trying to do with your body or with your breath or with your mental effort. Where you're trying to hold on to life. And see if at least for a few moments we can completely let go. Settle here for another few quiet moments. slowly begin to wake yourself back up, waking up your awareness of your solid physical body, your breath inside of that physical space of your skin. You might wiggle your fingers and your toes. And then inhaling to reach your arms up alongside your ears, taking a good full stretch. And exhale to bend your knees, rolling towards your right side. 
And slowly making your way up to seated and just find a comfortable cross-legged shape or whatever seat you like, sitting up nice and tall, letting the hips rest into the earth, feeling again that buoyancy in your ribs growing away from your hips. The shoulders relaxed, the face relaxed. And we just take a few moments here so that we can notice if there's any insight that pops up out of our practice from having looked at the world from different angles, upright and upside down and sideways and close to the earth. Maybe there's something that we learned or something that we noticed that had been hidden from us before. Bringing your hands together at the center of your chest and thank yourself for your efforts. Namaste.